Life Max. What's the turn out of my lifestyle? Smoking green, blowing white clouds to build the blue skies. Conversating with the gods by my wildflower huh? to let them know that it's the gods I would. This love's the never ending saga. Gods by my wildflower huh? to let them know that it's the gods I would. This love's the never ending saga. Gods by my wildflower huh? to let them know that it's the gods I would. This love's the never ending saga. Gods by my wildflower huh? to let them know that it's the gods I would. This love's the never ending saga. Walk through the sands of times like Gara on the other side of that gad is karma, he wet prada, the devil like inside your box now, while the angels fly over my head storm. Uh-huh, 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 yeah, we're back with another episode of the God's Hour podcast with your boy Big Serbs in the place to motherfucking be with you and me together at last together and free how's everybody doing what's going what's going on what's the dealio huh i want to know what the fuck is good with you right now buddy we gotta tell them we gotta tell them what the fuck is good with y'all mm, buddy is that what, is that what we gotta do buddy we gotta ask these people every fucking time we record this shit what is good huh I think so, buddy, and I think you're agreeing with me. You need to go to sleep. Hold up. Get get in there. Get in there. Go. Go. I got a, I got a podcast to record, buddy. We can't do this shit all the time. I'm sorry. I love you. But yeah, what's good, man? Happy holidays to everybody. Merry Christmas. Merry Kwanzaa. Hanukkah. Fucking candles. Cakes. Cookies. Bitches. Blunts. Uh, Christmas trees. Stockings. Fucking mistletoes. Missing toes, presents, pumpkin pies, pecan pies, bunuelos, tamales, roast beef sandwiches, fucking all of that jazz. I am so glad Christmas is here. It's over. It's gonna be a new year. It's fucking about to be October again. Halloween. The holidays are just something that I can always be excited about because let's let's just call it what the fuck it is. It's some capitalist shit that not the whole country, the whole world isn't really digging with. But, you know, I could get I could get down with it. I could get I could get jiggy with it for at least a podcast episode or two. Christmas, the time where people don't really seem to be all that interested in spending time with their families. They're interested in going to the fucking mall, even though we're in a fucking pandemic still. Everybody just wants to go to the mall. Everybody just wants to crowd the fucking mall, take pictures at the Rainforest Cafe. They want to be window shoppers. Mad at me? I think you know why, nigga. This is the God's Hour podcast. We remixing songs by Fifty Fucking Cent. Yeah, uh, Christmas time is is cool. I wish we got it. Would have got a fucking tree. I wish they put Christmas trees fifty percent off or something. The fact that the biggest tree you could get could be like a hundred dollars is some bullshit. Like I don't know what the fucking going rate is for a Christmas tree. But I for fucking damn sure can tell you I'm not paying a hundred dollars. I don't want to pay fifty dollars for no fucking Christmas tree. I'd rather buy those little those little tree pine scents with a fake tree, hang them shits like ornaments around a fake fucking tree, so that whole house can smell like pine cones in the Yosemite Valley. And that's a whole nother thing too. The fact that they have like seasonal seasonal shit. For people, that's the ultimate capitalist reward is just that this shit is like once a year things, balloons and K, uh, uh, hard, hard chocolates and what are them fucking little candy, those candy things that say be mine, suck my dick, I love you, get on your knees, bend over. What are those things, those little mints that they have for Valentine's Day? 
They have green colored shit, leprechaun hats for fucking St. Patrick's Day. They have all the tequila for Cinco de Mayo, which isn't even a fucking real Mexican holiday. It's really a real fucking Mexico victory over France. Fuck y'all. And then, you know, we have all this other bullshit that's just going, that's just fucking only here for certain holidays. I don't know. I, I don't really feel too good about spending all this money on bullshit. That I'm only going to be seeing for one fucking month or whatever the fuck it is. I feel like America needs to just get its shit together. But as far as the holidays go, I love it. I watched uh, Very Merry Christmas on Netflix. That was a phenomenal movie. And I didn't even realize that it was that old, bro. Like, that movie's already six years old now. And I'm just like, man, he got to do another one of them fucking movies. Because that was for... Because, you know, Christmas movies, you got like the Charlie Brown Christmas. You have Frosty the Snowman. Grandma got ran over by a reindeer. And I completely missed the cartoons. The Ed, the Ed, Ed and Eddie Christmas special. Billy, the Gr uh, Grim Adventures of Billy and Mandy Christmas special. There's a lot, a lot of childhood Christmas movies that I love. That I always enjoy watching around this time of year that I didn't really get to because, you know, we're getting we're getting to the podcast, the music We're right now. It's not even I hate that the whole business ventures that I pretty much anyone wants to take upon supersedes everything. I know we got to get money and shit like that, but we got to take a moment to rest, relax, be with the family. It's not it's not it's really not about. Spending money on bullshit, getting gifts, giving gifts. Like, I'm glad I got gifts, but I'm not going to be uh, giving people gifts. Like, it's just not my forte. Like, the whole giving gifts thing, I'm not with it at all. Uh, the fact that I'm in your life is already a fucking God's greatest gift that you could ever get. You know what I mean? Because I'm a real awesome motherfucker. I'm the realest nigga I know. And if you're not down with that... And you just going to give me like a 25 gift card to Dairy Queen or whatever the fuck it is. I'm just going to buy a fucking uh, Blizzard Sunday and throw it at your face and shit like that. And tell you Merry Christmas, bro. Because it's just super disrespectful. I at least deserve like a like a $250 gift card at Gucci. Not even like a $500 gift card at Gucci. Because them Gucci slippers is like $300. And then... And then what, what the 200 for some fucking cologne or some shit like that, you know? So I don't, I don't, I honestly don't get some of this holiday shit, but we're here already. This is the fucking world that we live in and we just got to fucking deal with it. I, I, this is probably my favorite holiday in the fucking the whole year, but I just don't like, I, I just don't like holidays. Like just. The whole idea of it is just not even what it really represents. Like, like we don't even know where Halloween comes from. I only really fuck with shit that's, like, real. Like, Dia de los Muertos and other holidays that really command... That really come from genuine places where we honor our ancestors or certain things of that nature, Right? Right. So we got a we got a few things that we gotta go over here. Over here at the God's Hour Podcast with your boy Big Motherfucking Big 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 Sir Herbs. These fucking my neighbors are over here like vacuuming and shit when it's about to rain. Like these fools are just fucking clowns. Like I don't know what what sex ring that they got going on where they gotta wash their cars and vacuum every single week. But it's annoying, bro. Like, these cock smokers, they just fucking are over here being nuisances every fucking day with this bullshit. It's either these fucking, these fucking dickheads who live down the street. They just, I don't know if they're going to get that fake grass or whatever the fuck. But they completely, like... What is it? They jackhammered all the cement off. They cut the palm trees down. They're redecorating. They're redoing their whole shit. I don't know what the fuck they're going to try to do. Build a fucking 
be able to slide down the motherfucking driveway and shit. Like, I don't understand. And these other dickheads were cleaning their fucking cars every day. Like, if they got hookers and shit getting fucking piped all night in them shits. It's really difficult to record a podcast and keep my cool when you're fucking in the back and you're like, okay, dick, let me just get my hollow tips and ask these motherfuckers nicely to relax with this shit. Because when you interrupt the God's Hour, when you interrupt Big Serby's fucking illustrious, amazing, omnipotent podcast the guns come out like 50 cent the guns come out and the guns come out niggas no what 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 no i'm a man i fucking love 50 cent shout out to 50 motherfucking cent oh yeah you already know if you don't listen to 50 cent you better just cut this shit off right now and just jump off a bridge onto a trampoline that throws your ass over the grand canyon because it's it's just what the fuck we do. We fucking praise our hip hop artists here. Great hip hop artists here that have retired and they've left a legacy behind. And this shit saddened me. This shit really broke my heart when I fucking when I seen this shit. I couldn't even believe I seen this shit, right? So I'm on, I'm on YouTube and I'm just minding my fucking business. And on my recommendations, I see that Conway the Machine announces his retirement. Now, if anyone knows me, y'all know that I fucking love Conway the Machine. I would love to say I know him personally, but personally, I've only met him like two times or maybe three times. And he's he's a really dope dude. And anything Conway is just like, I got to peep it. I got to see what's good with it because that's the homie. I would like to feel like that's the homie. We're not homies per se, but like, you know, that's a West Coast scene. Like, that's the homie. Like, if, if you're cool and and we and we see, you know, that it, that is some genuine shit like that's just the homie right there. Right. So I'm looking at this fucking video by Sam Buck. No one, I don't know, I don't know if anyone knows, but I don't know who the fuck this dude is. Sam Buck with the Bucked Up with Sam Buck, the Bucked Up podcast. I don't know what the fuck that means, but I see that he got an interview with Conway the Machine. I'm like, damn, bro, that's dope as hell. Like Conway's over here giving a, giving a look to these weddles that I have no idea who they are. They're not... Joe Rogan, they're not the greatest fucking interviewers, but everyone got to bring some different shit to, the, shit to the table, and that's what all, I'm all about. Let's bring some different shit to the fucking table, and let's talk about a few things. Conway did not announce his retirement by his own words in the podcast. He specifically says that he is at the end of his contractual obligations and that he kind of like lost love for the game is, is what he said. This is what he actually said. He never said he's announcing. He didn't say I'm retiring on fucking January 9th. He didn't say by the end of 2022, Conway is retired. No, he just said his contractual obligations are over. And a few more things, like he's lost love for the game. He's lost people in the game. Right off the top of my head, I could think DJ Shea, but there has to be, because he said people, like plural. But he said, but I felt that, yo. Like, I really felt, like, you know, I'm not even famous. Like, I'm not, like, no one knows, uh, quote, unquote, nobody knows me, según, but people know me, eh? But with the whole, you know, DJ Shea, he was he was awesome. He was kind of like their mentor, the Griselda mentor, the Griselda godfather. Uh, he passed away, I want to say, last year. I think he passed last year, like during, I think he got COVID and passed. Rest in peace to Shea. But I seen him at uh, 
the at the 420 Smoke Fest show and shit where there was a whole bunch of champagne and wine and they were passing out joints and I think I remember like just taking the whole bag like taking a whole bon- a bunch of joints from the bag and yeah, I think I'll get I think I'll get into that story later and shit. I think cuz this is what I want to do. I want to interview Conway. I want to interview the whole Griselda, but how is it finna be is I want to tell the story like in increments, like a fucking like a TV series like we're going to do part like a part of it. I want to interview El Camino cuz I said what what's up to him that night. I want to tell him like that part of the story. I didn't say what's up to Benny that night, but I want to interview Benny and tell him about that night. Keisha Plum, I want to interview her. I took pictures with her. I want to tell that story. And then, so Shay, uh, we was upstairs because they had the the GA, the general admission where, you know, you could just uh, chill or whatever uh, and watch the show. But I actually paid for VIP, so I was... You know, I had like a glass of champagne or something. I went upstairs to the VIP section. They had a bunch of wine and champagne and stuff there. So I I had um I had gone up there. They were playing like Mob D, Biggie Smalls. It was a dope night, just full of dope music. And DJ Shea was right there just looking at me, like scratching his his chin. Just looking at me like, I don't know if he thought I was a shooter or if I was packing or if I if I came to do a hit at that motherfucking place. But I wish I would have went over to him and I could have just been like, yo, what's up, man? I'm a I'm a big fan, da 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 da. Whatever, and it would have been all all cool. But I just didn't because he was working, like he was actually the DJ for the night. So I didn't wanna I don't know what I thought. I, I I was drinking too. That was when I was uh 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 drinking and smoking and shit like that. So maybe I was just a little too saucy to to because man, I, I got fucked up. Like towards I probably had like a whole bottle like of worth of drinks. And kids, if you're listening to this, don't do what I did and fucking drive home from Los Angeles, California. Like 20 something miles when you're that fucked up. I was fucked up. I was literally in the right lane going like 45, like fucking I hope a cop don't but don't bust me. But I was going slow, I was taking it slow. And yeah, shout out to DJ Shea. Rest in peace to the homie. Uh um. So the Conway shit. I feel Conway, bro. I, I understand where he's coming from. He said he he had lost love for the game. Everything he thought, everything ain't, ain't what he thought it was gonna be. And it makes sense, bro. Uh, the uh, he said he lost people. You know, the Griselda family ain't as tight as 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 how they were anymore. He sacrificed a lot of holidays and shit. And he he said he just wants to play video games. I'm paraphrasing. He wants to play video games and kick it with his, his family and and more power to him, bro. Like he's he's not a young artist. He's not a he's not a, a fucking one of these kids like out here that's fucking doing designer drugs and wearing fucking tight pants and spandex and dying a colored head fucking hair colors and shit like that like he's a grown he's a grown dude with a family already and i mean shit how many albums does conway have i mean he has a lot of shit bro like the first okay so he has like shit before like 2012 like american greed and and whatever he was doing before them but then he has like shit like reject Reject 2, Reject on Steroids. That's like my favorite uh, Conway album. You have Hall and Nash, Grizel the Ghost. You have uh, whatever album he did with Big Ghost, just him. 
Uh, no disrespect. I don't. I don't know. I'm, I I only listened to it one time. I thought like one or two songs was cool, but I don't fuck with Big Ghost, and we'll get into that story later. Um. Yeah, bro. Just Conway just has a whole bunch of shit, and like he said, like he feels like he 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 did his part. That's what he said. He felt like he did his part. He did what he needed to do, and more power to him. I just don't like the fact that these fucking media outlets will get the nerve to fucking post videos that he didn't even say in the video. He didn't announce his retirement. He literally told you fucking he he don't feel like rapping anymore. Say that. How about Conway don't feel like rapping no more? Why don't they put the video? Because that don't fucking make no clicks. Conway don't fucking feel like rapping. Well, fucking that's a big ass, broad ass statement. No, you got to put that he announced his fucking retirement when he said, in fact, he didn't say that. So fucking that's the, just the only shit that gets me pissed. But shout out to Conway. This Griselda run has to be at least. 10 years by now like 2012 was when what is it hitler wears hermes came out was it 2012 or 2010 i want to say it was 20 it was very early on in the okay so let's just say a good eight years from 20 fucking uh let's just say 2014 and now that's still like fucking eight years of some of the most game changing illest like they when 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 Conway came when Conway when they stepped into the game Griselda specifically Wes and Conway they changed everything bro it's funny because the first the first time i heard the first time i heard Griselda Ghost and Hall and Nash i couldn't really figure out who i like more Conway or West Side Gun on the mic I think I like uh, West Side Gun initially because I never heard nobody say no fly shit, grimy shit like West did. And then as I listen more and I listen to Reject 2, I'm like, Conway is just saying shit that who the fuck is saying, you know, um, I in hell, the last L right on hell steps. Reject, fuck you, respect. Listen, I got too many guns and not enough drama. So I'm broad day in the hood, popping the llama. I get, he said, I get the blocks from Poppy, then I holler, asa manana. Eating pasta like a mobster, silk Prada pajamas. I gotta be out of my fucking mind. Like, who is saying, who was saying shit like that, bruh? Nobody. So whatever, whatever it is, however, however the fucking dice gets rolled, I salute Conway. Thank you very much. Your career, your your energy, everything. Thank you. There, there has no been nobody before since it happened. I don't even think shit's gonna be like that after, bro. Because there's just it's a one of one. Conway's a one of one. Benny's a one of one. Wes is a one of one. El Camino, Keisha, the whole movement was a one of one shit that happened. That you know, I seen it from the beginning, but not from it, maybe from the very beginning. But I seen it from when the fire was just getting started. I seen when Reject Two was first released. And they were trying to get on. I seen West Side Gun tweet after Fly got I'm retiring. He said he retired about eight fucking times already or whatever it was. I literally seen them get shine, uh, signed to Shady. And nobody was really giving a fuck that they were signed to Shady. Years later, everybody's on Griselda now. This Griselda shit is forever now. It took a little minute, and even when they were supposed to be popping like they was, they people still was, like, doubting them or listening to the fucking Lil Nas X or whatever this bullshit is that got kids dressing like fucking fairies and fucking shit from Skyrim and shit like that. And all I really have to say to that is fuck all that bullshit, man. This is real hip-hop shit, and I've been down with it. And I'm gonna be down with it however however the chips fall, however many, however the Jenga blocks tumble, 
I'm good with it because when I needed to listen to that music, when I was alone and shit, going through my shit, when I was fucking kicked out of my school and I had no friends and shit like that, I had nobody to talk to me, nobody that gave a fuck about uh, uh, being homies with me and shit. I had this Griselda fucking music every day bumping in my iPod, in my ears and shit. That's all that matters, bro. Not all, not, not this fucking, not the money, not the clothes, not none of this shit, bro. It's, it's, it's really like life changing shit that they do and that they did. You know, it really is sad that Conway feels that way, but I felt that way, bro. Like where it's just like, you did what you had to do, bro. Or like you, you, you felt like you did all you could or, or. If, like, this shit gets to you, like, because the game is a lot. Like, if I feel like, if I can even relate to an ounce of what he's saying from just the little fucking minuscule bullshit that I've gone through, I cannot imagine what it's like to be any any of these uh, great Griselda artists out here, bro. Because this shit, this shit is a lot. And people don't understand. People just see the money or they see they see the image, the aesthetic, but they don't know what it's like behind closed doors. They most people never had a fucking grieve, you know, their mentors and shit like that. So I, f I understand. I, I, I completely understand. I respect it. I wish Conway all the peace and blessings. And I'm just going to take a quick break real quick. You know, life is fucking short, man. And. When we only have like a hundred mi minus or eighty years on this bitch, ten years is a lot, especially when you spent like your whole life trying to achieve some fucking like pretty much impossible task. Like the f the whole fame and the whole where you gotta get to where these dudes are, it's like fucking like a one in a million chance to do it. And you spend your whole fucking life doing it. So I have nothing but respect, admiration, and just overall respect for people like Conway that they just feel like, you know, he said he maybe he might, he, he'll get the spark again and rap. But after his contract and shit, he, want, he wants to rock away with that shit. And, that, and, and, and that's cool, man. Nobody should feel any type of way or anything like that like no have no bad whatever the fuck unless you know whatever but whatever whatever the whatever the stipulations is on um, retirement is is neither here nor there on a, on on another Griselda note West Side Gun was hospitalized again from what we know, he's still alive and kicking and shit like that. But prayers out for West Side, bro. Like, I know he has asthma. He has like like uh, underlying health conditions or whatever the fuck. And it's scary, bro. I, the fact that uh, all these rappers are dying and, and getting murdered and things of that nature, I'm really just like praying for all our artists that need it. West Side Gun included you know when you when you're going in and out of the hospital like that it's really not good especially when you're already up there in age i mean he's not up up there in age but i mean he's getting older me i had covid that was some bullshit i felt like dying i was really ready to go like it really hit me hard bro you know i came out of it good and i'm good and we're all good and 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 I needed to go to the hospital. I wanted to. I wanted to get checked out, but they wouldn't want to see me. You know, they 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 were pussyfooting around and shit. They were they were having me stand outside the hospital because I was positive for like twelve hours, bro. You think I want to fucking see a doctor after waiting outside in the fucking cold for twelve hours? No, I don't want to fucking do that shit. So fuck uh, these hospitals and all these fucking dickheads that don't want to see nobody because they have like fake gunshot victims. I don't live in fucking Compton. I don't live 
and none of these places where it's it's a lot of like hospital peoples and shit like that 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 don't need to be assessed. I think it's cool that they'll they'll fucking see uh some sort of dickhead with a missing leg or whatever the fuck first before they see a COVID positive patient. That just tells you that the government don't give a fuck. The hospitals don't give a fuck. So the the way you just got to take it like a champ, bro. When I was a kid, I had like asthma the first eight years of my life. My mama didn't even think I was going to make it out this bitch fucking into my adolescence or whatever. But guess what? I'm fucking here. I beat this shit. I beat drug addiction. I beat COVID. I beat fucking, uh, what's this shit? Uh, accusations. I've beat betrayal. I fucking, nothing is going to stop me from achieving my goals, my dreams, or none of that shit, bro. This is Big Serbs, the God's Hour, and I could give a fuck about you Levi's, you fucking gay lords, with your fucking gay fake ass juju, your fucking... Uh, uh, pr evil prayers of bullshit. Miss me with that shit. Suck a dick if you hate it. And just, just to reel it back to West Side Gun, cause it, this this ain't about me, right? Uh, you know, prayers up for West Side Gun. Get better, peace and blessings. And I pray that you don't need to visit the hospital anymore. And I'm praying for you. I really am. So on a lighter note. I watched Narcos Mexico season three. Awesome. I mean, it's not a it's not a perfect biopic or whatever the fuck. It's not like the the illest shit. The you know what I mean? Like the greatest season of all time or whatever, but it was it was pretty good, you know, seeing how Amado Carrillo his business tied in with the Norte Valle from Colombia with the Cali cartel and how it just all went to shit. Like, like the, the season kicks off with the Tijuana cartel partying and stuff like that. But as soon as they go to war with Sinaloa, that's it, bro. That shit, that pretty much fucked everything up for the narcos at the time the politics the corruption isn't that funny how the cartels created the corruption and then when they went to war it pretty much began the 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 obstruction of corruption and they murdered a whole bunch of journalists a bunch of innocent people they killed a lot of fucking people, bro, over drugs, greed, corruption. It's a beautiful, it's a beautiful show, you know what I mean? I really love the Narcos. The whole, the whole, all the seasons were ill in some sort of way. There was a lot of, a lot of great actors. Uh, Bad Bunny, shout out. I mean, they made... I mean, anyone could have played Bad Bunny's character. I think he was. I think he was El Kitty. He was like one of the narco juniors. I guess they would call him like the son, the sons of of the cartel leaders. Um, but he did he did a pretty good job. You know, he he came with all his fucking uh, designer clothes and zapatos and shit like that. Which I have no. I have listen. I I say shit like faggot and gaylord and shit like that. But I'm not. I'm not trying to offend any gays. I'm not trying to attack any of our brothers and sisters that happen to be homosexual. I was just raised in certain raised raised to say certain things, but I don't really believe in in homophobia and, and, and all this shit. But you know, I'ma just say that it's it's a little he's a little colorful out there, right? That bad bunny dude. Um, which is cool. I mean, it's all good with him. I, I I really could give a fuck whose dick you sucking and shit like that. Like it don't. And if he's not, I mean, you know, it's even bad to say shit like that. So, whatever, right? Narcos Mexico season three was ill. I feel like they really only touched on a few, like just very, very, very few events that actually happened. I mean, not at events that happened, but. The reality of Narcos Mexico, like you watch Narcos Mexico and just know that you're watching a Disney version 
of what really goes on. Because right now, motherfuckers are getting their heads chopped off, faces burned off, uh, mutilated, uh, uh, rapes, fucking kids dying. Like, I've seen shit that you could never make a show out of. The fact that they made this shit already is kind of like, wow, like, we're in a place to where the 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 cartels would never allow you to make shit like this but now it's gone to the point where it's a different area and the cartels aren't operating like that anymore like it's just not outright violence that's going on it's just it's kind of like how the mafia evolved like they're not there's no John Gotti's or nothing like that no more but it's it's still like covert it's low key so if you haven't already, go watch Narcos Mexico or Narcos in general. It's a really great, uh, you know, Netflix. You know, they're they're trying to pump out a show every week or whatever, but very, very seldom shows get the praise that I'm giving them because there aren't that many shows to be watched that are that good. There's very few shows where I'll watch the whole thing and be like, this shit was hard. Narcos Mexico, hard. You pretty much see the birth of of drug trafficking in Mexico to kind of like where it is now almost where it's like, it's just a whole different, it's evolved into a whole different, you know, you see it in its squirtle stage to it's like war turtle stage to kind of like almost the blastoise stage. But now, now that's where it's at. Now the, the, the drug trafficking is on, it's on not a final stage because as long as drugs are illegal, this shit will go on forever which I don't think they're ever going to legalize drugs. So the cartels are always going to be pushing something, bruh. So it's just going to evolve. It's a, it's just in a different stage of its evolution. Let's talk about a few more a few more things. Uh, we got the Game of Serbs. Game of Serbs. Game of Serbs. We got it launched, baby. Game of Serbs with your boy... Playing video games. How you like them motherfucking oranges, nigga? I'm over here doing shit that I've been wanting to do for like 10 years now, bro. I've always wanted to do video game of uh, uh, videos, commentating. I honestly want to be like Dashy XP, Game Vids, and Penguin Zero, aka Critical. Those are kind of like my favorite video game YouTubers that inspired me to do that. Like Joey Diaz, Joe Rogan, and a, and a few other people inspired me to podcast. Those YouTubers inspired me to do my uh, video game channels. I, I'm pulling... And I'm not even going to call it a video game channel. It's just a game channel. I'm going to be... Uh, I already got a bunch of videos of me uh, pulling Pokemon cards, Yu-Gi-Oh cards, fucking, you know, I'm going to be doing a sat. I got Assassin's Creed on there. I got four Black Flag. I got Rogue. I'm planning on dropping Dead Rising videos, Red Dead Redemption, uh, Borderlands. There's a few, there's a few, because I don't, because I'm not, I'm not a huge video game a uh, nerd where it's like I'm playing like every fucking game that came out giving a review like I'm not IGN out here trying to fucking play everything I'm just trying to have fun with what I got with what I like and my whole thing is content content is king creativity is power and bitches suck dick for five cents right uh, excuse me 50 cents <laughs> So if you want to watch, if you want to watch a uh, fucking game of Serbs and, and things of that nature, I'll, I'll hit the link in the description. You can definitely shout me out. Uh, tell a friend, tell your girlfriend, tell your girlfriend's girlfriend for me. That'll be nice. If you do that, I'll give you a free copy, a free digital copy of Voodoo Love. Just got to show me the proof that you did it. I got to check the ladies out. If they got C cups or better. Boom, there you go. Voodoo love, dog. It's a voodoo love. Voodoo love. Voodoo love. Oh, and Friday. I don't know if I'm going to drop this video Friday the 31st or next Friday. 
But MF Doom, rest in peace. I've been listening to Doomsday all fucking day long, every day this week. Um, MF Doom, man, probably one of the one of the biggest inspirations on my music. He's one of the illest artists ever. <clears throat> He actually passed away October 31st, but we didn't get the news until December 31st. So I guess we'll we'll call it the anniversary of the announcement. But MF fucking Doom, bro. I can't believe he passed. I always wanted to do a song with him. I always wanted I always wanted to to work with him and stuff like that cuz to to me he was everything to me, bro. When I was like a, a sophomore and shit, like musically, I felt like he was like unfuck with a bull. At some point, he was like the greatest rapper ever. Inspired, inspired. Literally, when they say your favorite rapper's favorite rapper, like that's him, bro. Like he inspired West Side. Like all this Griselda shit, underground shit going on now is with Doom, Jay Dilla, Madlib, what they were doing. Back in them days, bro, back in the early 2000s when when it was the finger snap beats and it was the fucking you, Soulja Boy on that, you, you, all that. When all that shit was popping, bro, MF Doom was dropping fucking, uh, uh, um, uh, uh, what's that song? Uh, Ghidra has arrived. Uh, you guys could take five. When it's all over, no snakes alive. That's like probably one of my illest favorite songs from doom shout out to grim too he gave him the mf name but shout out shout out to doom man my favorite doom album has to be mm food either mm food or doomsday because it always it always changes but i could listen to both i could listen to both of them albums and not skip one joint i could just if we had like a fucking like if we had a drive to Mexico or something and we had all Doom albums, I'm not skipping a Doom song. We listening to all them shits until we get to fucking Guadalajara, bro. And we fucking over here with mojitos and tacos and bitches and blunts and turkeys and fucking hams and shit like that. Oh yeah, and that's why I'm dropping the the cookies, my cookie recipe on fucking YouTube. Uh, uh, you know, I feel like I perfected my cookie recipe. It only took me about fifty fucking batches to do. Fifty fucking batches of me sweating with the oven, with the pans, with the sugar, with the butter, with the cookies, getting this shit right. Being Gordon Ramsay, being better than fucking who's the dude, Emmy or whatever his name is, the guy who says boom or whatever the fuck it is. I'm over here saying bam, boom, bam, motherfucker. This is how I am. Big serves in the place to be. I got cookies made for you and me. So fucking cookies, rest in peace to Doom. We dropping that. And I think some of my favorite cartoons got to be the 90s X Men, Spider Man. Uh, past that we got Avatar: The Last Airbender, Yu-Gi-Oh, Pokemon, fucking Pokemon. This is why I need a pop filter because this shit's gonna fucking sound like I just hit some bitch in the face. Boom! Baby Looney Tunes, Looney Tunes, Tom and Jerry, the Three Stooges, the OG Three Stooges back in the day. And yeah, man, uh, cartoons have always been part of uh, childhood. You know, if it, you know, like that that fucking Levi uh, Lime Snapple. He's like, he said he tweeted me some shit after after I I dissed him for copying my style and flow and shit, which everybody knows. Like, it's no secret. Like these fucking Levi's are out here thinking that that they don't know that they're fucking stupid. That I know that they're fucking stupid. But he's like, you play Pokemon. I'm like, in my head, I'm like, yeah, nigga, like, what does Pokemon got to do with you being a pussy? And, you know, he didn't reply to me and shit like that because I muted him. I don't know why I muted him after I added him. You know what I mean? Like, that was that was such a big mistake. Like, we could have made, I could have made it a thing. I could have really, like, 
I could have really had him, bro. <laughs> like, like I really could have like did some damage to this Levi if I fucking just had him on on unmute and just responded to him the moment he said that stupid shit out of his mouth. I could have said it to him then, and it could have been a, a a thing. But you know, God has God seen it all, bro, in our lives. So I think I think it's just. You know, he's already scared of me. You know, he's a scary ass Lev over here in disguise in LA and shit. He don't want to be seen by your boy Big Serbs. Cause you know, I'll knock him the fuck out on sight. And that's on my mama. That's on my mama's mama. I could give a fuck about people who want to plagiarize and steal from other artists and think that they don't have to fight me. You know? Because when you want to act gangster and shit, we could get into some gangster shit. But I'd rather knock you the fuck out. I'd rather, I'd rather fucking just hit you with an uppercut that makes all the silver out your teeth fly. And then I could collect the te your teeth and shit, melt them down into a spoon. And then fucking, you know, eat some cereal with it or something like that. Specifically Apple Jacks. You know what I mean? Because I fuck with Apple Jacks. Apple Jacks. Snapple facts, you gon' get your ass kicked as a matter of fact, you lever. My favorite arcade, favorite arcade games have to be Mortal Kombat, Street Fighter, uh, fucking The House of the Dead, Pac-Man, Mrs. Pac-Man, Galaga, you know, arcade arcade games now are like fucking Fruit Ninja, fucking Guitar Hero. You know, back in the days, arcade games was Marvel vs. Capcom, Dance Dance Revolution. The fucking, the, what's that shit? The speed bag, you would fucking boom, you'd hit. And then the points would go, -da 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 -da, and you'd fucking see your score. And then, you know, it'd be like 2000, but then a grown ass, a grown ass blood would just boom, hit that shit. And then he get like 10,000 points and you're like, whoa, this fool knocked me the fuck out. Maybe I should hit this thing more often, right? Um, yeah, there's a there's a really dope uh, arcade called uh, in La Cachanilla Mall in Mexicali where my uh, my folks is from, where they stay at. And they got they got, you know, just a fucking a ill it looks like fucking like a ghetto Jap Japanese arcade, bro. Like, it's the illest shit ever. You know, I was fucking... There was a whole mob of people that watched me fucking lose against this fucking cheating ass dude who kept playing Sub-Zero. He kept, um... He just... All his move... His move was just hitting you with the ice ball, the ice beam or whatever the fuck. And that was his big move. I was, I was hitting this level with uppercuts and fucking... Jumping over and, and kicking them and shit, doing combos and shit like that. Where this level, I was just doing the same shit. I don't, I don't fuck with that. These, these fucking, these, these little fags and shit over here that want to do the same moves. They think they doing moves, but they not doing nothing but the same shit. So how the fuck is you gonna fucking fault a nigga for doing, bringing some different shit to the table? Every time when you over here doing the same shit, it don't make no fucking sense. I've been seeing, I've been seeing this. Oh shit. God damn it. Fucking A. I'm so, I'm such a big human being. They call me big subs for a reason. Cause I sit down and my knees start moving the table. My legs kick the fucking outlets. My hands fucking touch the mic and shit like that. But Tex, this Texas border wall is going up and, you know, racism lies on borders, politics, things like the LA Times posting bullshit. And what people don't understand is they think that this Texas wall is like attributed to racism. But if you go to Mexico, the fucking border walls have looked the same since they built them, bro. Like they're just... It looks like it looks like if you're going into a prison or something like that when you go to Mexico, bro. Like that's lame, bro. Like I don't understand it. You know, I understand that they're they're trying to do their best to keep 
illegal immigrants from coming into the country, but that's never going to happen, bro. Like, it, there's going to be people who get here, whether by naturalization, legalization, illegalization, they're going to come in, bro. My fucking, my mom came here. My fat, my fucking family came, my whole family came here from Mexico, nigga. You think all them motherfuckers had papers? No. But they got them now, bitch. What? <laughs> America is so stupid. Like, these niggas over here, like, oh, yeah, we're going to build a wall. We're going to build a wall and show you fucking bean-eating chimichanga motherfuckers that you can't come here and eat our beans. Nah, man, it's just like... It's just like, fuck you, Levi's. We're going to do whatever we want to do, and that's just what we're going to do when we do it. You know what I mean? It don't matter. Don't matter how many racist Looney Tune characters you make, like Slowproke, Rodriguez, and, and Speedy Gonzalez, nigga. We're going to come in and pick the fields, and we're going to do these characters, voiceovers and shit, and it don't matter. It doesn't matter, because we're going to fucking come. We're going to make our tacos. Y'all going to eat them. We're going to fuck y'all bitches. Going to have y'all babies. And then we're going to have mixed kids, bro. Like, it's just simple mathematics. Two plus two doesn't equal five. Doesn't equal three. It equals four. Okay? Ontario. Ontario feels a little colder now, guys. This whole climate change shit. I mean, it's really, like, really fucking weird. Ontario... You know, I, I don't I don't remember the last time the last time it rained like this. I mean, it's been raining like a bitch. Like if like if like, you know, you fingered your girl and shit and you hit that spot and she's like, woo, woo, and if you just get the shower, bro, you just with your your head up and, and her legs and all the water's falling down, all the juices, all the all the great orgasms in your face. It's just that's how it feels over here. It's just getting flooded with rain. Like we in the fucking middle of Mississippi or some shit, bro. Like I don't know what the fuck's going on. This whole climate change is scaring me. It's getting colder. The summers are getting hotter. And the fucking gas prices are fucking through the roof right now. I don't know what the fuck. Why it's like almost six dollars for fucking a gallon for for a gallon of gas in Los Angeles when we when we got all the oil we got oil reserves my nigga like it's just what the fuck are these idiots doing i mean you know we got the cure for covid we got the cure for gas we got the cure for everything but it's just these assholes got agendas to do they got their fucking little games to play and we're not part of the club so we're not fucking gonna be knowing what the fuck this shit is and it's pissing me off so shout out to my city ontario man Cali califa say eh? ontario eh? yo soy yo soy de ontario way eh? pinchy ontario ontario sur eh? nah i'm just kidding there's the there's the ovs gang over here so i don't need them fucking coming over here and pressing me and fucking Wanting me to pay their tax. Y'all y'all do what y'all want to do and, you know, leave me out of whatever political agendas you have, okay? Oh, Nardwar versus J. Cole. The interview we've been waiting for like a year or whatever. That shit is tight, bro, in the beginning. Where it's like all those fireworks going off. And Nardwar, he goes over to J. Cole. I don't know if this was planned. It completely looked like... Nardwar just looked over, went to J. Cole, said he had questions for him, and J. Cole was like, nah, bro, next year, next year. And Nardwar was like, next year, you're going to do come over next year, next year? And then they did it, bro. So they they happened to do this interview at uh, some studio in Santa Monica, California, uh, which is, is, San, is Santa Monica closer to San Diego? I think it is. Or maybe it's in a different direction. But I want to say Santa Monica is... It's more south, south of Los Angeles for sure. You know, yeah, J. Cole, that was, I've only seen like maybe like most, most of the interview, like a little more than half of it is really dope. They filmed it on like the anniversary of 2014 uh, Forest Hills Drive, something like that. But, you know, synchronization is, is crazy, bro. The fact that everything that's what I'm saying, bro. God's seen it all. God, you know, he got a plan, bro. 
And it's it's not like the Drake song, God's plan. God has a plan. And the way it is, you have no fucking idea what it is until after it happens, bro. And then you're like, oh, shit, this shit fell together like the fucking pyramids, bro. That was a really ill interview. I really like, I really enjoyed watching it. The, you know, because I just love music. I love, I just love everything about music. Nardwar showed him like a bunch of beat breaks, a bunch of history, musical history. He had one of his producers that was there. Gave a little insight on on some of their songs. And that's just dope, man. Shout out to, to Nardwar and J. Cole. You know, uh, if you haven't already, go watch the interview. It's a really great interview. And Nardwar is just fucking crazy, man. He has questions that nobody nobody knows how he gets it, but they got the answers to him, bro. And it's always some it's always some crazy shit. The dog on Riverside Drive 2 is coming very soon. Okay? Just just so y'all just so y'all know, because a lot of niggas are scared of the dog. When I unleash that dog, ooh, motherfuckers get bit. Fucking rah, 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 rah. My dog's coming for your ass, nigga. The Dog on Riverside Drive 2, produced by DJ Adobe Premier. We, uh, I want the homie, uh, uh, Noe Crap. I think that's how you pronounce it. Uh, uh, Noe Crap. I need him on that, bro. That go, go, go hit the homies up and tell them Big Serb said that they was ill and y'all need to go listen to their music, bro. I'm fucking with these dudes from South Korea, you know. I fuck with the homie Spark the Lie. He's from Virginia. NC, he's from Indiana. Uh, Float Lucid, he's from Ohio. He's based in Ohio right now. We, I already went all over the map. We taking this shit international. This some international dope, nigga. We got this shit popping in South Korea, my nigga. I'm going to be like MF Doom out there just fucking, you know what I mean, with a mask on or some shit like that, just playing my fucking records. And this dope. Shout out to DJ Adobe Premiere. He said, uh, I, I remind him of big pun. I get, I, I've been, I've been getting that. Like it's either like Biggie, it, it, the top, the top three by one, two, three is I get big pun, Biggie Smalls, and then I get doom. You know, I've gotten Busta Rhymes and I had a whole bunch of, of rappers that I had wrote down with people tell me I, I, I sound like and shit like that. But big pun, I always love hearing that one because Shout out. He's the first he's the first Latino artist to say brujeria on a track. I uh, I feel like I I popularized it. I'm popularizing it, keeping his name alive. And the dog on Riverside Drive 2 is going to be fucking way way better than part 1. Part 1 was just cuts from Voodoo Love. It wasn't even like a scheduled thing. It was like it was just like when you fucking your girl and you just having fun and then boom, you 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 got her pregnant. And you're like, damn, well, I wasn't expecting this, but fuck it. We here, dog. The the dog, too, is completely like, you know, where, you know, you want to have a scorpion. So you have Valentine's Day and you tell your girl, yo, just, just make this shit happen and you make it happen. And then and then. And nine months. During Scorpio season, you have you have your seed, and it's the illest fucking thing in the world. That's kind of weird. I hope I'm not grossing anybody out by that kind of uh, reference and shit like that, metaphor. But that's how I feel with the dog on Riverside Drive Part 2. It is everything that I wanted it to be that one wasn't. I'm talking about Bull Heights, where my father's from. I'm talking about like prison, gangs, guns, violence, bitches, and things like that. That, I can't wait, I can't, cannot wait for y'all to hear it. It has been nothing but an awesome process. Prob probably the, the, the best, easiest process I've ever had to work with uh, a producer with, you know, because I've, I've worked with several producers, but I don't think to, I don't even think I've done a whole album with one producer. I think this is the first album I've done completely produced by one person and granted I have like one beat on there and I'm executive producing it but it's just a whole different thing when you have all the beats at your disposal disposal from just one producer that completely 
completely changes the dynamic of everything. Cocaine sell itself, CSI. That's going to drop before the doggone Riverside Drive Part 2. So cocaine sell itself. That's just a thank you to all my producers. I don't know if I talk about this already, but it's going to be like 23 tracks. It's going to be a lot of tracks, but a lot of shit, bro. A lot of motherfucking songs I got for y'all niggas. I got shit. I got, do I got cuz on it? I got Mufasa on it. I got a whole bunch of artists. Nephew Hesh. I got NC, Float Loosest, Spark the Lie, Nelonious. I have so many. I got Shadow Go. I got Sally Ghost. I got a whole bunch of shit. I got y'all the secret shit. It's a whole motherfucking ride that we've been through. Because from like 20, what was it, buddy? Like 2017 to 2021, this is a sh snapshot. Four years. Thank you very much, all my producers. All the people who've worked with me so f thus far, this is a thank you to y'all. Cocaine sell itself, self-explanatory uh, 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 title. Thank you to everybody who's worked with me thus far. The good and the bad times, the levis and the allies, it's all been a ill, ill process. That's dropping on my birthday, January 9th. So maybe I will drop this uh, podcast episode on Friday. Cause I, I I don't I don't like recording because the the world is moving so fucking fast. So so by the time you're dropping an episode that's two weeks old, you're like two weeks behind of shit. And I could keep up, right? That's that's no biggie to me. We could I like the challenge. I could fucking do a podcast every week, bro. That's we came out with 17 episodes within three months this year. When we kicked it off, we're already, this is episode 18, guys. That's pretty much a third of a year's worth of podcast episodes. If we dropping it every week, I've already gave you all like a third of that. In the first fucking three months of me doing this shit, nigga. <laughs> and that's another thing with the N-word. Uh, if you have a problem with me saying nigga, you should probably go fuck yourself because you don't know what the fuck you's talking about. It's not like I'm a white motherfucking, uh, Weddle that grew up in Mississippi talking about fuck all them niggers over there. Like, I would never say that. As a matter of fact, if I'm with a black homie and you call them a nigga and you not black, and if you try to say that, like, if you, like, like, you know, like in Bronx Tale, like this Bronx Tale... I'm going to fucking knock you the fuck out. You're going to get punched. My knuckles are going to scrape the fucking cement, giving you a fucking uppercut, bro, because you don't do that. But I say nigga as a, tier, a term of endearment, and I don't know if I've explained this already, but I'm explaining this shit way too much. Just wanted to throw that out there again, right? Because I got black people in my family, and if you're not down with that, like DX, I got two words for you. Suck it. I dropped a lot of music, guys. 2021, I gave y'all everything I could give y'all. La Merca Supremacia, She Loves Me, She Loves Me Not, Bridge City Trap, Hands of Time Remastered, Dog on Riverside Remastered, my debut album Voodoo Love, El Cucuy Remastered, 44 Degrees Remastered. I remastered all this shit, bruh. I mean, yeah, they might not be brand new ass Vinny Vitti Vici. I... I didn't reinvent the wheel on y'all, but I dropped a lot of material, guys. And and for good reason, because this is like literally the last year I dropped fucking uh, all that old shit I had with Chava, all the old shit I had with Mufasa. We're heading into a new millennium, a new direction, a new fucking dimension of dope shit I got lined up for y'all. 2021 was a positive year, a great game-changing year for me. I kicked off the video game channel, the podcast, my debut album. 2021 was a great... Sp I got COVID. I got over that shit. I fucking fucked COVID in the ass like a, like a drunk bitch at a party, horny as fuck. And you know what? Even the negatives are taking the positives, bro, because everything is a lesson. Everything is a blessing, 
Um, just just to go back to 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 the to the very Murray Christmas, I'm gonna go watch it again just because I loved it. I love the concept where he didn't feel like you know being in the Christmas mood. He wants he 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 gets all all his people to to do the the Christmas special with him, and he gets George Clooney and they're all singing and dancing. And then by the end, he's happy that it's Christmas. That's what life is all about. Even when the chips are down, you still gotta you have to wake up and realize everything is a blessing. Everything is peace and happiness when you look at it that way. <clears throat> when you just look at it. Like if nothing could stop you, you got goals, you have dreams and you live them out and you don't let nobody stop them. No matter how many times they try to strike you down, no matter how many times people tell you, you can't do this, you can't do that. Da, 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 da. Fuck them, bro. I wish everybody a Merry Christmas, Happy Holidays and a Happy New Year, motherfucker. This is the God's Hour. Smash, smash was the turn out of my lifestyle Smoking green, blowing white clouds to build the blue skies Conversating with the gods by my wildflower To let them know that it's the gods I would This love's the never ending saga Gods by my wildflower To let them know that it's the gods I would This love's the never ending saga Gods by my wildflower To let them know that it's the gods I would This love's the never ending saga Gods by my wildflower To let them know that it's the gods I would This love's the never ending saga Walk through the sands of times like Gara On the other side Side of that gad is karma, he wet prada, the devil like inside your box now while the angels fly over my headstone.